Hey YouTube, Jam here, and welcome back to the gaming station. Today, I want to talk about a few brawlers that I think are pretty strong in the game, and if you play them, you should have success when trying to push trophies. I'm also going to go over what modes I think they should be played in, and what their biggest weakness is as well. But, as always, when I do these types of videos, I want to hear what you think down in the comments. What brawlers are you having success pushing right now, and let me know what you think of my list as well. Alright, let's get into it. First brawler I want to talk about today is going to be Mr. P. Now, before I go into too much detail about why he's on my list, let me say I do think you need to have either one of his star powers to make him really shine. So, if you're like me and don't have him yet, you may struggle at times, because while his base kit is okay, he gets a lot better when you unlock his star powers. So, in my opinion, Mr. P's kit is very versatile. He's got good damage and range and can attack over walls, and he also has a good amount of health for survivability, and his super can be obnoxious at times. He can play lane or mid in gem grab and brawl ball, and is great in control modes like hot zone and siege. He probably shouldn't be played in heist, as his burst damage is a little low to have good success in that mode, and he's a little more map dependent in bounty, but he can still work there. I mentioned his super already, but I think it's the real key from taking Mr. P from an average brawler to a great one. Getting your porters out early and chaining super so you always have one on the map is a huge help to your team. They deal a decent amount of damage and force your opponents to either take damage, waste ammo on taking them out, or make them back off and help you win your lane. And this is why Revolving Door, his newly reworked star power, is so good. It makes it so there's basically no downtime from the time your porter's taken out till the next one is spawned. I'm not going to go into too much detail about Handle with Care because I'm trying to save a little bit of time, but the extra range buff gives him a lot more favorable matchups, which adds to his versatility. Alright, the next brawler I want to talk about is going to be Max. Max got her damage buff slightly, but I honestly think she was low-key a decent brawler even before the buff. She's not relying on her star powers like Mr. P, so she's more reliable at lower levels. She's a great mid-range fighter, having good damage and speed, and having 4 ammo slots built in her base kit allows her to do a good amount of burst damage when she gets close to an opponent. Max shines in gem grab, brawl ball, heist, and can be played on some siege maps. Her speed and damage allow her to play as an aggro brawler and keep pressure on weaker opponents, and if she gets in trouble she can pop her super to get out of a sticky situation. And Max's super is probably one of my favorite abilities in the entire game. Being able to give your whole team a speed buff and rush up the map can be so powerful when used at the right time. It can be downright broken in Brawl Ball or Heist, allowing you and your teammates to rush up a map quickly and overwhelm an enemy team that's trying to heal or waiting for respawns. The one thing I will say bad about Max is that I think her gadget goes a long way to help her. I've been playing with my Max at level 5, so I don't have it yet, and there's times where if I could dash forward, I could have secured a kill or been able to dribble the ball and score a goal. Maybe I'm wrong, but these situations make me think that the gadget makes her a lot better. Carl's going to be the third brawler I talk about today. He's gotten buffed in the last two rounds of balance changes, his super the first time, and his main attack the second, if I remember right. Carl's a jack of all trades type of brawler. His kit is made so that there's no real bad matchup for him. He has a good amount of range so he can keep his distance and do chip damage when matched up against short range brawlers, but also has the health to close gaps on long range brawlers, and his super and reload mechanics help him win those matchups when he does manage to get close. He's viable as an aggro brawler in gem grab, brawl ball, siege, and hot zone. I wouldn't play him in Bounty since he doesn't really have the range to stay out of danger there, and I also wouldn't play him in Heist as he doesn't really have the DPS to win base races, although he can work if he has the right team setup I suppose. I would say the biggest drawback to Carl is honestly the fact that he doesn't really hard counter any brawlers. The brawlers that he does match up well against can still play around him and win if they know how to dodge and avoid his attacks. But if that's the biggest drawback to a brawler that has no real bad matchups himself and is viable in 4 out of the 6 modes, I'd say it's a fair trade off. The second to last brawler I want to talk about today is going to be Tara. She's also gotten buffed in the last two rounds of balance changes, one HP buff and one damage buff. I wasn't shy about saying the fact that I thought she didn't need those buffs, as I felt she was balanced at the time, and now I feel like she's very much on the strong side of the meta. In my opinion, Tara is now one of the best brawlers in the game. She has decent health, and her damage is great, especially if you manage to get close and land all three cards on an opponent. On top of that, she has one of the most devastating supers in the game when used right. She can get a team wipe on a team if they aren't paying attention and group up too close. But even if you go for single target pulls, it's pretty much always a guaranteed kill and can almost fully charge your super backup, allowing you to get your next one very quickly. I would say Tara's best mode is gem grab, brawl ball, and maybe hot zone. She can also work in bounty on snake prairie and deeper danger if you have her gadget and can see into the bushes. The two things you need to watch out for when you're playing Tara is her long reload speed and her long supercharge rate. These two things paired together can make the early part of a match slow if you're missing your shots and aren't getting your super going early, or if you mess up and miss a super. And the last brawler I want to go over today is Gale. He got a huge rework in the last round of balance changes, and most people are regarding him as the best brawler in the game right now. 
I was on board with the changes to his super, but not so much his main attack. I thought it was going to make him very strong, and it wasn't really a needed change. And that's pretty much the whole reason why he's on the list now. Gale has really good range, and he now does insane amounts of damage. He does something like 1700 damage when maxed out, and it's very easy to land his shots due to how fast they move and the pattern of his shots. His super is great because it can make space between himself and opponents, or displace them and force them into spots where they don't want to be. Even if it doesn't do much damage, it still has great utility. I would say Gale is viable in all modes, except maybe Bounty. And if you have his gadget, he downright breaks Heist and Siege. Putting a jump pad down and launching your whole team onto the Ike or safe allows you to do massive damage with very little effort and can outright win games sometimes. That would probably be what I list as his drawback. He's a lot better when he has his gadget and stunning star power. The stun from forcing enemies into walls can almost guarantee a kill if you have full ammo, and the launch pad that his gadget provides can be extremely valuable to a team. But honestly, you can still push him without these, I'm just saying that they make him a lot better, kind of like Mr. P. So like I said, I'm pretty sure these brawlers are some of the strongest in the game right now. Mr. P is probably the worst one I listed, as I feel like he needs his star powers to truly shine, but he can still be played. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you haven't subbed yet, consider subscribing. I'm almost to 100 subs, which was my goal when I started this channel, as I didn't really know if anyone would really care about what I had to say about this game. It's a big milestone in my head, and I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me so far. Next week, I plan on updating the meta breakdown videos, as it marks two weeks since the last round of balance changes, so stay tuned for that as well. But that's going to do it for today's video. I really want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.